Hello my dear friends, this is Prashant Mamani here and I welcome each and every one of you in this geography lecture. In today's lecture, the main thing or subject which we are going to talk about is continents and in continents we are going to focus on Asia. Now before I start any further, I would like to say that this lecture is particularly designed for students who are preparing for competitive exams. Apart from competitive exams, if you are a student of school or if you are a parent who would like to know more about uh, continents and would like to teach the same to your kids, then you are most welcome as well. The only thing different from academic studies and competitive studies is that with competitive exams we have to relate basic things of any subject with what's going on around the world. And once you are able to build this bridge between current affairs and basics, a new thing a new miracle takes place which I believe helps you to understand things and once you understand uh, what's going around you can analyze it and once you can analyze it you can express it may it be in written form or may it be in um, verbal form now again remember when I say written and verbal that does not mean that you don't have to practice. You have to practice your uh, communication skill. You have to practice your writing skills. But again, the roots of all that things is your understanding and your grip on that particular subject. Right, friends. So let's move on. As you can see from this colorful map here, you can see different continents you'll be knowing that there are seven continents in the world Asia, Africa, Europe, North America, South America, Australia and Antarctica. As you know today we are going to focus on Asia which is uh, given here in bright orange color. This is the continent which is one of the largest continents in this world. But before going through continents, we have to understand some basic things. Let's do it. The basic thing is lithosphere. Now what is lithosphere? It is the solid portion of the earth. Now you know very well human beings will live on solid portion. Now this solid portion can be plains, it could be plateaus, it could be mountain areas about which we are going to discuss in our future lectures. We will learn about uh, different landforms in future lecture but for now it would be more than enough for you to understand that lithosphere is the solid portion of the earth. It is the portion on which we live. It is made up of rock from earth's crust. It also has a layer of soil and soil has nutrient elements which sustains organisms. Now there are two divisions of Earth's surface. One is continents and the other is ocean basin. But today we are going to focus on continents only. Do not get frightened if you don't know what is Earth's crust, right? Do not get frightened if you don't know what is ocean basin. Rest assured, I will cover each and everything that is written here in our future discourses. Now, moving on to Asia. Now, I highly recommend before you learn Asia or if, before you read about Asia, you should observe the map of Asia. 
The reason why I'm saying this is because in my previous lecture that was dedicated on maps, I have uh, explained how we should read maps, isn't it? If you are not sure about how to read maps for your competitive exams, then I would highly recommend you to pause this video over here, go through that lecture, understand what uh, things are explained there and come back over here again and then start this video. Now, for those people who know how to read maps, <coughs> I will move ahead. If you observe the map of Asia, you will find that this continent, right, is surrounded by water. On the northern side, you will find Arctic Ocean. On the southern side, you find Indian Ocean. On the eastern side, you have Pacific Ocean. Apart from that, you have many different sea as well. One of the more, most prominent ones in context of India is Bay of Bengal. And the other one is Arabian Sea. If you are living on the western coast or western side of India, you would be familiar with Arabian Sea. If you are living on the eastern side, then you would be knowing Bay of Bengal as well. If you are following current affairs from like uh, one year or something, and if you, are, if you are reading newspaper on daily basis, then you would be familiar with this word as well, South China Sea. Right. The other things which you should keep in mind, keep in your mind while learning about Asia is that you should observe some other subtle things, like say for example, Tropic of Cancer. Now Tropic of Cancer is 23.5 degrees north latitude. The other important line is Tropic of Equator. You can see here that is zero degree. If you observe it minutely, you will find that Tropic of Equator is passing through Asia, isn't it? This country, this is Indonesia, right? This country has Tropic of Equator passing through it. And this country is part of Asia. So you can say that Tropic of Equator passes through Asia. Now if you are living in India then you would be knowing that Tropic of Cancer is passing from India as well. And whilst learning some basic thing about India, you would also come with a term that Tropic of Cancer divides India into nearly two equal parts. And everything below Tropic of Cancer becomes southern part of India. But when you are learning specifically India then you do not consider this part as southern India. It is of course this part. But when you are learning India as a whole and divided two parts, then the northern part is the part which is mm, above Tropic of Cancer and the southern part is the part which is below Tropic of Cancer. Now we can apply the same thing to different parts of Asia as well. I leave it for you to do that. I'm not going in too much detail. This is just an example uh, presented to you regarding how to learn about any place, may it be continent or may it be any country. Moving on, now we know seven continents and we are focusing on Asia. Now it is the largest continent in this planet. It is located completely in Eastern Hemisphere. Now why it is located in the Eastern Hemisphere, again if you go back to my previous lecture on uh, longitudes you will find that earth is divided into two equal parts right uh, from north to south and that is we take prime meridian as our baseline so everything that is on the eastern side of prime meridian becomes eastern hemisphere and everything that is on the western side becomes western hemisphere so if you observe asia we know this that uh, prime meridian is passing through england so everything on the eastern side is Eastern Hemisphere. So this continent of Asia is completely in Eastern Hemisphere. The other thing about Asia is that <coughs> it is 
not completely in the northern hemisphere. The reason being, Tropic of Equator is passing through Indonesia, but we can say that only sm only a small part of Asia is in the southern hemisphere. Apart from that, majority of Asian continent is in northern hemisphere. Ural Mountains divide or separates Asia from Europe. It is located uh, nearby Russia and Eastern Europe. And these are the mountains that divide or uh, separate these uh, two continents. And the area nearby Ural Mountains are also referred as Eurasia. That is the mixture of Europe and Asia, known as Eurasia. The other mountain, prominent mountain is Himalayas. Uh, I'm sure you'd be knowing much about Himalayas, Mount Everest and other um, other um, high peaks that are located in Himalayas. It is one of the most populated continent uh, in this world as you have two uh, most populated countries that is China followed by India. The other thing is that you might have read this thing in uh, current affairs, particularly when uh, in Japan and India's bilateral uh, summits that 21st century is century of Asia. It is also known as Asian century and the reason is that uh, China is growing uh, economically, um, India of course is growing and other countries of Asia are also flourishing and that is the reason it is known as that. 21st century is Asian century. Now, apart from that, we are also going to learn something that we often find in current affairs, say for example, different parts of Asia. Now, if you look at the political map of Asia, I'm just showing you example of how you should prepare your geographic basics, right? Once your basics are strong enough, you can build many other things on your basics. So I'm just showing you a small example and we are also learning about continents. So say for example a term you might have heard about South Asia. You might also have heard about a term called SARC that is South Asian Association of Regional Cooperation. Now this is your northern Asia, northern part, this is your southern part. When we refer SARC we know countries like India, Pakistan, then we have Afghanistan, Nepal, Bhutan, uh, Bangladesh, uh, Sri Lanka and Maldives. These are the countries and Bhutan as well. I think I have referred, I have uh, talked about Bhutan. These are the countries that form part of SARC. But when you talk about South Asia, again, this, again, these are the uh, countries that are part of South Asia. The other uh, terminology that you might have heard is ASEAN, that is um, Association of South East Asian Nation. And when you talk about South East Asia, then it is different from South Asia. In South East Asia, you take Myanmar, Thailand, uh, Indonesia, Malaysia, Brunei, and Cambodia, and all these countries, Philippines, and all these countries. They are South. East Asia. When you talk about Eastern Asia, you come to these countries here. When you talk about West Asia, these are your countries. They are known as West Asia. When you come about Central Asia, then this all the countries, this Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, these all countries are part of your Central Asia. This is your Northern Asia here. So this was uh, everything regarding Asian continent, right? Of course, there, <coughs> beg your pardon, there are many countries and many more things that we will learn in future. But regarding basics, I think that's everything. Once we finish all seven continents, then we will go into more details. We will pick up more small, small things of, uh, minor things of, uh, continents and we will learn and we will understand, uh, we will develop our understanding of this subject. So I'll keep it till here. Do pass me your comments. This is Prashant Mavani signing off. Take care. Enjoy. Goodbye.